Hello, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Beth Lee. And we are the Youngs. Hey, thanks for joining us again today. Yes, uh, thanks We are for starting a listening. New, uh, new series today. And yes. We're so excited about this. We are. And are happy mm-hmm. that you are part of it. Yes. And I uh, just uh, want to, again, remind you a little bit about, kind of put it in the back of your mind right now, just any moment, any day, we should be able to finalize the dates for the Couples Conference, right. Gatlinburg, Tennessee, October 2022. Yes. And uh, so we'll be exciting. giving you the dates and also Gatlinburg, the place. Gatlinburg, any time is, I think, a well, good idea. Yeah, my wife more so than me, but the mountains are beautiful. The mountains are gorgeous. <laughs> and in October, it will that just is true. be lovely. Oh my goodness, that's true. Yes. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So I hope you'll uh, just begin even now thinking, we're going to go. We're going to bring some friends and we're going to yes, come together. Please and do. It would be awesome to meet mm-hmm. many of you there and, and see you. Uh, it does appear it's going to be towards the end of October is what we're thinking right now. We're looking. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have that for you just as soon as we can nail it down and have all the information where you can register and begin all of that and the prices and all that. So mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Yes. And uh, we're just so, so very thankful for each of you that come to see us. Yes, please uh, come we, see us. Uh, let's see now. Uh, we are, we're on the road. Yeah, and, uh, we, <laughs> we're somewhere. We just finished at New we? York and <laughs> um, uh, West Virginia West last Virginia. week. This week are in Cleveland, yes. Ohio. Okay. And uh, so if you live in the Cleveland, Ohio area, come, come join us. us. Cleveland Baptist Church, our revival meeting. Yes, we have a children's. One of our favorite churches, actually. Absolutely. We have a children's revival going on as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, with our friend uh, Chase Williams, who's doing oh, the children's right. meeting. Yeah, so bring your whole and, family. Uh, so we'll be in southern Michigan next week and then two yes. weeks in Iowa and Back to Illinois and yes. then in West Virginia. Check it out, evangelistdaveyoung.com. dot com. And come also, see us. also remember to uh, share our podcast. Mm, um, yes, if you think it'd be a help to somebody, share it with them, like it, subscribe to it. Right. We were talking to a pastor's um, wife recently who said that she heard a podcast that she thought would be helpful yeah. to some friends of hers and ladies in the church, and so she was sending them the link. So that would be awesome. Yeah, she sent it out there, and and uh, so if you think of this, it would be a help to somebody. Uh, our podcast, please let them know. Remember, we would love to hear from you. Yes. And uh, you can go to keepingityoungpodcast.com, send right. us an email. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can uh, send us a voice message. I know we've said that yes. a ton of times. That uh-huh. little microphone, right hand <laughs> corner, bottom corner. Uh, we honestly love hearing from people. And it, just a few, it takes just a few moments. But mm-hmm. uh, one of the big things I want you to begin thinking about is a que- our next question answer sessions. So your questions and hopefully (laughs) biblical answers. Yes. (laughs) And so uh, send those in. Uh, We'd love uh, love to start compiling that. We already are compiling our list Mm -hmm. and getting ready for that. That'll be coming up here pretty shortly. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So and we love to get encouragement too. So if yeah. it's just a line or two about, hey, we love this podcast, you or I love amazing. this thought, or uh, <laughs> well, you are amazing, honey. Aw, uh, you are. So are you. Aw, that's good stuff, right Thank there. Thank you. And that has nothing to do with this series that it has we're starting. To do at all, no, we're not was... starting a series on marriage. It's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty enjoyable there. All right, <laughs> what we're going to talk about the next few weeks is just goals. And parenting goals. Parenting goals. And uh, we just thought we would take some time to address the fact that it's so easy in our culture to float as a yes. parent. Mm-hmm. We are busy. Life's crazy. But sometimes we're just in survival mode. We have a general <laughs> idea that we're going somewhere. Right. And But really, we don't have a definite goal or a definite plan to kind of help us get there. Right. And uh, so we just want to talk with you over the next few weeks about having some goals. Or sometimes and, we uh, have goals, but they just kind of get waylaid because of the busyness. Yeah. And then by the time we realize that we haven't been working on a character trait or whatever with our children, we're like, oh, no, it's we really need how to much, back it up. It's amazing how much time can pass in yes. busyness. Yes. And we're like, wow, we've let that go for several months, and now there's a lot of work to overcome that. Yes. And uh, so we're going to start our session today with some goals you should have for your toddler or right? your maybe preschooler, your preschooler, mm-hmm. and uh, start with the younger ones. But just some cautions. Let's just mm-hmm. mention a few cautions, and yes. we'll probably mention these every session. Right. But remember this: remember that your kids are more important than your goals. Mm, what do you mean by that? And what I mean by that is that it's so <laughs> easy in our culture uh, of Christianity. We so desperately want to succeed. That sometimes yes. we can become so goal oriented that right. we, the goal becomes the issue and not the kid. We're all about the rules and not the relationship. Yes, and so you know you've got to be focused on your child more than your goals. Right. And uh, the goals are are to help the child to become everything that child should be for the glory of God. Right. Not just so you can say, "Look, we accomplished that goal." 
Right. And so if that makes sense, it does. Uh, goals uh-huh. are to keep us on track, mm, not, not to, to control, control us. us. <laughs> Because, you know, our kids go through different scenarios. Uh, yes. We go through life changes. Seasons, yes. Seasons of life. Mm-hmm. And rather than to allow a goal to control us, to we're like, oh, my goodness, I'm beating myself to death because right. of this goal. Yes. Well, don't live like that. Goals no. are just to help you stay on the railroad track. It is. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Sure. Just make it a practical and biblical thing. Which would be another way of saying goals are to be a help, not a burden. Yeah. <laughs> there to help us. If your goals are burdening, uh, such a burden to you that's like, oh my word, I'm a miserable parent and my kids are miserable and life stinks, <laughs> uh, then your goals probably are not helping. Right. A well, we should put the caveat there too that sometimes your children will go through seasons where they are really testing the character trait that you're trying to instill in them. So if it is a biblical character trait, it is something that is not negotiable. Um, it may become a slight burden for a season, and that is okay. Just keep the goal in mind, and remember your child's more important. Right. Um, but overall, your goals should not be this sure. huge weight to you. Sure. And, and one more thing I would say as a caution, uh, your situation may demand different goals than others have. Absolutely. And we that's should not compare fine. ourselves among ourselves because the Bible says that is not Wise. Not wise at all. And it, right. you know, somebody says, what are you talking about there? Well, maybe like, maybe you have a child that has um, major autism. Yes. Well, how you would train that child is important. Yes. Because they do even, need training. A, even an autistic mm-hmm. child has to be trained to obey. Absolutely. And to function properly. Right. And to have self-control. Yes. Uh, but but the way you would go about that would be different than you might if the kid didn't have autism. Absolutely. You still need goals. Fostering, yes. maybe you're foster parenting. Mm-hmm. There would be some goals you would have as a foster parent that would be different than, yes. than, than otherwise. Mm-hmm. Or a single parent situation. Yes. Or a divorced parent situation where, yes. you know, sometimes they're with the other parent and the other mm-hmm. parent does things a little differently. So you have yes. to adjust your goals uh, in those life situations or stepchildren may be in the yes. home and uh-huh. there's that... You know, we've we've several times counseled with people who are working through that process of, well, this yes. is not your son. That's my son. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah, but he's in my house right. kind of thing. And that uh-huh. can cause real problems. But mm-hmm. uh, moms and dads, if, if, you're, if you're together, the two of you parenting, you should have an awareness of what goals you have. Yes. What do we want for our child? What do we want for our son? What, we do, what do we want for our daughter? Right. And these are some basic things that we're going to talk about that are biblical, Um, But the way you go about them may be different from the other moms that are in the toddler nursery with you. And so, again, don't compare yourself. Your your goal may be the same as theirs, but you'll get there a little differently. And I would even go so far as to remind our, uh, you know, it's okay to do things differently without having to post it on social media. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and kind of put down others who don't do it the way Absolutely you do. Absolutely not. It's okay. Yeah, you should You're, not do that. Uh, just just do what you think. Seek God and seek God's word and get right. to know your child and talk with your husband and your wife mm-hmm. uh, or or your former husband and former wife. Right. Communication has to happen where the kids are involved. It does. And come up with some good goals and say, this: these are the things we're working toward. And then the question is, okay, how are we going to get there? Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a process, moms and dads, that you have to do yes. in order to succeed as a parent. Mm-hmm. God never intended parenting to be a sense of uh, frustration, mm. irritation, bother, right. and, and all of that. Parenting right. should be a blessing as we're investing. If these goals are some that you have already, then it does bring rest to your heart as you're training your sure. child to do this. And you see sure. the little um, victories along the way. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, so a little bit of brainstorming. What are some goals you should have for a toddler or you know a mm-hmm. preschool child? A preschooler. Uh-huh. And, and there's one that I hope everybody would think of. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope everybody in the world would think of this one. And mm-hmm. it is the word obedience. Obedience. Moms and dads of toddlers and preschoolers, don't overlook that one of the most important things you're doing right now is training obedience. Right. And it's not easy. It involves training, correcting, repeating. Right. And it's not even culturally acceptable no. because you're squishing their creative You're just to let them do whatever. If you are demanding obedience yeah. from your child. But train, 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 train. Yes. And correct and correct and correct and correct. Right. And repeat it. Just keep repeating right. if it. If this was the only goal you had, this is all you would do as a, a mother of a toddler or a preschooler. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and, and the fact is uh, that uh, it, it could be the only goal and make a huge difference in the life of the kid. It would yeah. because I think it's pretty, looking at this list that we have here, it's pretty foundational to the to, rest to of everything them. everything else. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, obedience, don't, don't forget this, moms and dads. If your kids are little, obedience is so important because it plants the seeds of self-control and yes. self-denial in the heart of your child. Right. And as your child learns to obey your voice, to mm-hmm. give their attention to you, to right. listen to that which co- is commanded, mm-hmm. as they learn correction, they did wrong, right. they didn't obey, so they have to go through a process of being corrected for that. Mm-hmm. All of that is teaching them self-control and self-denial. Yes. And years from now, when your uh, toddler or your preschooler is 24 or 34 or 44, mm-hmm. The life they live, whether they have self-control or no control, will be in a great way traced back to whether or not we succeeded in training them obedience. Right. It's just training them to live an honorable life. It's exactly right. And it starts with you, moms and dads, uh, not having a yelling, unhappy, screaming fest with your toddler. No. But you patiently, Mm -hmm. consistently, over and over and over again, teaching them. Yes. Teaching them to obey. Looking in their little face. Teaching them to obey. Look at mama. And, and somebody says, but I've told them this. I've been working on this for three years. Yeah, but you have 18 years with them. Right. And so don't beat yourself up if if you're still in the process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes along the way, you say, well, I've tried everything and it's not working. We'll do a couple of things. One is uh, get, a, get a little bit of counsel to see if maybe there's not a different way you could do it that you haven't tried yet. Right. Uh, or maybe you're doing something that probably is not the best way for that child. Right, just evaluate. So evaluate along the way. Obedience is vital. And it one of the is. most important things Bethany and I taught our little ones was to obey. Right, and and it does take a long time. And those of you who are listening, David and I often joke that young parents probably hate to be around us because they feel like they're going to be the next illustration either on the <laughs> podcast or in a sermon somewhere. And that's not true. No. Um, when we're with young families, we, we totally get it. We had five of our own and all of oh, them were little sinners. Um, and the just toddler like the and mom. preschooler, <laughs> preschooler, I just no comment there, no comment. And their dad, okay. And but dad. we we get it, and we also appreciate the time and the patience that it takes to train obedience. Yeah. And so, moms and dads never, you know, never feel badly for your kids in the process of being trained. Right. You know, like oh my goodness, I can't believe they just did that and. In front of the preacher or the pastor or (laughs) in Walmart. That's just a normal part of life. And you just consistently keep training. Yes. And you consistently keep training. Yes. You know, there's a reason we send kids to school. How many years of of arithmetic does a kid take? Mm. How many years of literature do they take? How many years of grammar do we teach our children? You know, there's probably too many uh, years of math and not enough oh, of literature. No, no, That's no. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the, I'm thinking the exact opposite there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Oh we're, my, we're very different on that respect. That was, I, I like an the, illustration. I like the math and science, and Bethy likes the literature and grammar. That's right, and history. And, uh, so we do real well training our kids. We do. In we homeschool well together. As we we cover both sides of that. And um, I would also encourage you as parents um, in this obedience time, in those toddler years and those preschool years where it just feels like it is constant, um, don't beat yourself up. Yeah. There's always tomorrow. His mercies are new every morning. And sure. so your mercy should be new every morning. Don't get up with a chip on your shoulder toward your toddler. Put them to bed at night. Um let them get off to sleep. You take some relaxation time and get a good night's sleep too. I yes. um, I had a friend one time tell me that you should always go in and look at your children when they're sleeping because they're so beautiful and they look like little angels and it reminds yourself how much you love them. So make sure you do that too. And then that next morning, get up renewed and ready to go again and training that obedience. Yeah, and moms and dads, in our culture of busyness and distractions and frustrations, Mm -hmm. sometimes we make it hard to teach obedience because uh, our kids are never on schedule. Mm. And and, and try to get your kids on a routine where you you have breakfast a certain way every morning Mm -hmm. so that your child knows what to do. This is the way we prepare for bed. Right, they don't have to guess. Yeah, and I know like one of the things we did with our kids was we would read to them at night, mm-hmm. and it quietened their heart. It taught them to sit and listen. Right. And that was super powerful. It is. Uh, it was just uh-huh. a little tool that connected us to our children. Mm-hmm. It meant that we had to turn the TV off. It meant that we put down Facebook. It meant that we're not scrolling Instagram because right. we're only parenting right now. Right. And uh, yet those were great years. I uh, I got the point where I could almost quote Dr. Seuss. <laughs> 
and our kids could too. Yes. They would, they would, you and know. it gives that sweet time at the end of the day. Maybe it has been a rough obedience day for both of you. It gives that sweet time at the end of the day where you are being very relational with your child and you're building that love and that trust and affection. And yes. they are more apt then the next day, not to think, oh, mom and dad are so upset at me. Yeah, so so the training and the correcting, just just be practical about it. Right. And uh, you moms and dads, I know life's crazy busy, but just be practical. Start mm-hmm. developing some routines in their life yes. so that they know and there's expectations and that right. sort of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's not the only goal you can have for a toddler. No. What are a few others here? Well, how about gratitude? Hey, that's a good can one. Can a toddler say thank you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And they can pray thank you. Yes, they can. You know, thank you, God. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. Yes. And and uh, as they, you know, get a little older, they can draw thank you. That's true. Uh-huh. Say, uh, you know, and you could write a little note on a piece of paper and say, this is this is from your grandson. Yes. And uh, thank you for the whatever. Right. And then have them draw a picture. Have of them whatever. draw a smiley face. Or, and grandparents, yes. uh-huh. grandparents eat that up. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they love that. So and make sure you praise them when they are thankful um, don't get frustrated because they don't automatically say it on their own. This again, just like obedience, you have to train it over and over and over yeah. again. Say thank you, say thank you, say thank you. When they do say it, even if you had to remind them, praise them. Good job, good job. Yeah. We're always what, thankful. Uh, what you find is when you're training a toddler, is it often has to become a matter of habit, to where it's right. not that they're embracing it at first. No. They obey out of habit, right? And then later they understand. Oh, Oh, that's what mom mm-hmm. and dad were trying to teach me. Right. And and gratitude is something that they may not understand, you know, mm-hmm. oh, wow, I just am overwhelmingly grateful for this food that I'm eating as my as a three-year-old. <laughs> they but won't by, even be that way as a by teenager. Them, <laughs> <laughs> but by them mm-hmm. learning the habit of when you are blessed, when someone is kind, when you are enjoying a meal. Right. It's a, just a ha- habitual thing to say thank you. That eventually clicks in their heart and mind it as does. a matter of course of life. Mm-hmm. And this works yeah, a lot that's important. better if there is a culture of gratitude in your home. So you got to model it. Right. You have to be an example of this. Parents, if you just have a critical um, attitude all the time, then, and, but you're, you know, snapping at your toddler, say thank you. Why didn't you say thank you? That's just not a good culture for them yeah. to learn gratitude. And in. it is amazing. You'll find that moms and dads, your toddler, your, your preschooler will mm-hmm. emulate you. They will. So you should not expect something yeah. from them that you're not doing yourself. Be careful how you respond because you will find in the worst possible embarrassing moment, <laughs> they will respond with the exact words that you use. Yes. So we've yes. got to... We've got to model it. Uh, There's other goals, obedience, gratitude. How about respect? Mm. That's a good goal to have for our children. It is. And uh, as you know, we're reminding them to, uh, at least where we're from, to say yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, To look, look, look in the eye, look them in the eye. Right. And uh, we have a friend who's, when his kids are with me and I speak to his kids, he'll say to them, look Uncle Dave in the eye. Mm. And what is he teaching there? He's teaching them to have respect, smile and speak when others do. Yes. And uh-huh. we always made that a big deal. We have, you know, children that are uh, more, uh, is it extrovert? More extrovert. And we have a couple of our kids that are more introverted. Right. Yes. But whether you were an extrovert or an introvert, we made sure to say, because sometimes a kid who's an extrovert in all the excitement of the moment and all the distraction of the moment isn't right. looking someone in the eye who's speaking at them. Right. They're just responding. moving on to the next thing. <laughs> but sometimes an introvert ignores them, you know, right. like, I can't believe you're talking, please don't talk to me. Oh my word, you're talking to me. And, <laughs> and, and, but each of our children have to be trained to, with their extroverted, stop, stop. Yes. Someone just spoke to you, mm-hmm. look at them right. and speak to them, smile at them and speak to them. Right. And, and even an introverted shy child can look at someone, smile and speak back. Yes. And so that's all training. They can. And it, and it does, starts it takes in those toddler years. It a lot of time, parents. And it's not something that I, uh, at least from my perspective, should be something that you do to embarrass your child. If your child is overly tired or overly hungry, um, that, you know, time right after Sunday morning church where they already should have been in bed for a nap mm-hmm. <laughs> and everyone is trying to talk to your child. Um, it's not that you have to make excuses for your child. You could try and you could say, oh, Mrs. So-and-so is talking to you. Can you look at them? Can you smile at them? Can you wave at them? And if not, don't make a big deal about it. Don't embarrass your child and don't be overly embarrassed yourself. You are training, you're working on it, and it will come. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's entirely fine, moms and dads, just to say that. 
right. say, uh, hey, uh, thank you for speaking to our little one. We're working on this. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just smile and move on. And, right. And don't lie about it because if you're not working on it, don't lie about <laughs> it. But if you really are working on it, right. don't be stressed about that. And I'm like, I can't believe she probably thinks I'm a horrible dad. I'm, I'm a horrible mother. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no way to think like right. that. No reason to. Just yeah. say, you know, hey, we're working on this. Just thank you for going. speaking to my child. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we talk uh, just some goals here. We're talking about goals for your toddler, your preschooler, obedience, right. gratitude, respect. Uh, let's put these next two together here and, and give the last one. Okay. Uh, we, we jotted down kindness and happiness. Kindness and happiness. Because, you know, little ones need to learn to respond to others in kindness. Yes, they do. To treat others kindly. Right. And this is the time where aren't you constantly saying, share, you can yeah. share. And instead of, you know, prodding and poking and provoking people to anger. <laughs> Yes. Attempting to get a reaction. We, right. at this point, learn to show love. We learn to hug. We learn to yes. you know, to smile at each other, to treat our brother kindly, our And sister even kindly. the tone that they're using. If you have a toddler who is in um, angry mode and they are yelling no or give it to me or, sure. you know, whatever, it is time to stop and say that was not kind. It was not a, a happy way to say that. Let's a, back it up. Not a good way. Not a good way at all. And then the happiness side of that. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, Listen, uncontrolled of crying and complaining and pouting should not be tolerated. Right. Don't let your child grow up to be unhappy. Right. And yes. uh, you've got to train your toddler to be happy. Mm-hmm. And and it might even be you need to do the phrase, you know, hey, you need to get happy right now. Right. And uh, But a, a child who grows up, uh, who cries about everything, they don't get their way, they cry about it. Right. Uh, they complain all the time, a, a mm-hmm. little one that pouts. Or they whine. Just mm-hmm. a continual whining, whining, whining. Right. Uh, don't put up with that because that'll make right. for an unhappy toddler, an unhappy, <laughs> an unhappy parent. preschooler, <laughs> and some really tough parents. Yes. And, and uh, uh, don't beat yourself up over this one either because it's going to happen. Your yeah. child is going to whine. They are going to pout. They are going to get unhappy about things. But again, it's just that training, that goal of, hey, no, we're not going to be unhappy about yeah. this. And it might mean you just have to sit a child down and say, now, look, Mm -hmm. you have to get happy. Right. And I want you to sit here for a few moments. And when you're happy and you can smile, you can get up. Right. And uh, just a simple little training because you want your children to have a joyful, happy heart. That's part of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is. And then, Mm -hmm. then there's one more goal that every parent should have for a toddler or preschooler. And that should be the goal of truth. Mm. Did you have another comment there? No, I didn't. Not about the um, kindness and happiness. Should be the goal about truth. And uh, Mm -hmm. right now when your kids are toddlers and preschoolers is a great time to be teaching them the word of God. Yes, they can learn verses. It amazes me. In our church, we have an Awana program and they have uh, the Cubbies, which is your preschool program. And I think they might even have one that's a little bit younger than that. And then when they have the program at the end of the season, it just amazes me how those little ones can spit out verses. And they learn the truth of God's word. Yes, they do. And you know, there's a ton of ways we did a, we did a wana. Right. Uh, we loved mm-hmm. that with our children. They learned God's word in right. Awana. They did a Awana um, and some, some of the churches we were in did master's clubs. And we and... did age-based Sunday school. Uh, I know yes. some, some of our list, some of you that are our listeners are are perhaps not for age base, but mm-hmm. for us, it was a great tool. Yes. We put our kids into Sunday school with, with good teachers. Yes. Who taught lessons on their level. Yes. Uh, we did train them to sit in church. We, oh, we, absolutely. we did train them to mm-hmm. be part of the adult service. Yes. But we were also comfortable with putting them in an age based mm-hmm. uh, lesson series. Right. Sunday school. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, they learned so many things. Yes, and then they we do. even used it. We even used Patch the Pirate. We did. Yes. Uh, we loved those Patch the Pirate series mm-hmm. and Adventures um, in Odyssey. The Adventures in Odyssey was another series. Yes. And we, when we were in the car, you know, it, it wasn't what I'd always want to listen to necessarily. No. <laughs> but when we had little ones in the car, we would listen to, we just continually invested in yes. the Patch the Pirate materials because they tell a story, they sing songs. Yes. And and every so often, even uh, recently, our, our adult children, two of our children were in the kitchen doing dishes mm. and uh, they were singing the little song about uh, getting it done, I think it was, getting it. <laughs> finish the job, finish, finish the job, get it done. Finish the yes. job. And uh, they were uh-huh. they were joking about it. I mean, it was like uh, you know, can you believe we did that? <laughs> and uh, but at the same time, I was amazed. That was years ago, and they remember it. Yes, they do. And here they are doing a job remembering a truth they learned from a dear Christian ministry that right. produced that to help us as moms and dads with our little ones. Yes, and they learn character traits yeah. from that. And I was even just thinking as you were talking about music, singing songs with your children or listening to music with your children, age appropriate. 
um, biblical songs that teach them truth um, mm-hmm. so that they can have oh, yeah. that happy heart, sure. um, singing with your children, and then teaching them verses and Bible stories on Absolutely. your own. Now, I have to be honest devotions. that I liked Patch the Pirate better than Adventures in Odyssey because Patch mm. the Pirate finished the story. <laughs> And I don't know how many times I, I wondered would, where you were going with I that. I would listen to an Adventures in Odyssey, and I'm all in. Wow, that's good. And until next time. Uh, yes. And then we weren't able to get the next time, or the kids mm. would go ahead and listen while I wasn't there. Right. So I have all these unfinished <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey stories in my heart and mind. Oh. And uh, I think I want to be okay. Yeah, well, you can but. go online and listen to them, actually. <laughs> I probably should. <laughs> At any yeah. rate, so... Moms and dads, uh, set some goals. How long has it been since you sat down and talked about how are we doing as a parent and uh, right. what can we do to have some goals for our toddler, our preschooler? What, right. what should we be working on? And sometimes you just need to sit down and reevaluate. Yeah. What are we doing wrong? What are we doing to frustrate our children? Uh, the Word of God is very clear that we're not to frustrate not to our anger. children. Yes. We are just to train them and bring them yes. up in the nurture yes. and admonition of the Lord. Okay, well, uh, that's our first part of the series, having goals for our toddlers and preschoolers. Join us next week, and we'll talk about having goals for our preteens. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, the tweenies. And we're looking forward (laughs) to talking to you as well about having goals for your teenagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're even working to see if we can come up with a whole series on having goals for your college-age young people. Mm. And uh, so I hope you'll join us next week. All right? Thank you. Well, this is Keeping It Young, and uh, thanks for listening. The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 Media production. All rights reserved.